there was a competition among 12 different artists in Chicago. And we've been told, thank you, you have a very nice drawing. We did not think that we we're going to get the sculpture. It was quite an honor to get that project, quite a coup. Actually, at the time, Michael had retired from basketball, and that was one of the reasons why they wanted to do the piece. So we met him in the White Sox locker room, and we were taking photographs and measuring. When we took this project, we understood we have eight months. Nobody knows about us in Chicago, and we have to make sure that everything will work like a Swiss clock. So there was an enormous amount of stress, and then I got diagnosed with breast cancer, so I had to deal with that along with finishing the piece. We had to focus on everything else but, but, and, and. But I'm a good example of, you know, surviving. I thought, you know, I want to get the impossible. To create the piece when Michael is totally up in the air and is dunking the ball into the pole, into the basket and the pole. But there is no base. And we worked out to create this triple steel post that will carry estimate 2,000 pounds of bronze with all the stainless steel that when you stand there, is a free flow completely up in the air. There's steel that goes up through the legs for stability. I think the United Center can collapse down, the sculpture will still stand. Yeah, they said they could rest a, uh, a Volkswagen Beetle on the other leg and it should hold. <laughs> when Michael was training with the White Sox, we wanted to do the last minute touches on the portrait part, the head. So we actually drove the clay head down to Nashville and sat there for hours with him in a hotel room <laughs> working on the clay. It was like out of a movie. In 94 is when we unveiled it. It was stormy and rainy and windy. So the foundry wrapped it in plastic and it's hanging there and swinging, you know. There's chances of the thing slipping. It was just all the elements we're working against us. I think it was Halloween night as well. <laughs> it will be here long after we're gone. And, you know, it just has this long-lasting capability. Since the sculpture of Michael Jordan, our studio completed 165 pieces. We have the pieces in Los Angeles with the Lakers, Will Chamberlain in Philadelphia, Vince Lombardi, Green Bay Packers, and Curly Lambo. Gordy Howe for Detroit. We've done the Detroit Tigers. The White Sox, their um, 05 championship piece, and the Cubs. The Harry Carey. The issues. Bears, Chicago Bears. There are plenty, I mean, all over the place. We build it, and they will come. About a year ago, they gave us a call and said, we're ready to do a piece of Scotty. And they wanted an indoor piece, half body, to go on a pedestal, actually right across from Johnny Red Kerr, who I had done. And so Scotty lives in the area now. He moved from Florida, and so that was easy. He came to our studio. He sat while I worked on him, took measurements. So it was pretty ideal to have him here. And He's really a laid back guy, really friendly, and I think he was really pleased when we unveiled the piece. We will be doing artwork till the day we die. It's the good thing about doing art, is that you don't retire from it. You just always do it. One of the major keys in most of our projects, they're gonna last for hundreds of years. Uh, you know something? Our career probably will rise many, 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 many years after those who've been sculpted are long gone. And that will be part of the beginning. <laughs>